Greetings. I would mentioned in the previous article that I would review the pamphlets from work. This first pamphlet, this booklet, is the most closely related to my MPhil and PhD topics of free will, determinism, the problem of evil, determinism. Now this pamphlet, Free Will versus Predestination, Calvinism and Arminianism Explained, in my opinion, is using more classic theology. I did use classic theology in my British work, but I also used philosophical theology and philosophy religion. So rather than discuss Calvinism, I used Reformed theology. And I'm not a Calvinist, I'm Reformed. I don't hold to infant baptism, although I don't think that it's heretical. I hold to believer's baptism, and I have Baptist leanings, Mennonite brethren leanings. I didn't discuss Arminianism, I discussed evangelical theology, evangelical free will. So it's views of evangelical libertarian free will versus reform views on limited free will. I coin it as limited free will. Pamphlet is quite handy. It has a basic explanation of free will versus determinism as in the sense of free will or predestination. It has a side-by-side -side comparison, Arminianism and Calvinism on TULIP. It mentions some major exemplars that I use, for example, Augustine and John Calvin. Augustine for free will theodicy, John Calvin for a supporter for reform views within a reform compatibilistic theodicy. Augustine would be an incompatibilist theodicy or free will. Now, importantly, this pamphlet deals with extreme views. One extreme view is called hyper-Calvinism. People holding to this view may deny the importance of sharing the gospel because they reason the elect will come to God in any case. In addition, it leads people to question their status as elect, creating both tendency towards legalism and great anxiety for believers. Now, this classic theology, which is also philosophical theology, can be tied into, within philosophy or philosophy religion, the idea of hard determinism. Hard determinism would be that God is the only cause of human actions. There's no secondary cause. And I think one of the reasons why hard uh, determinists often come from the hyper-Calvinism camp is because they want to deny any human work of salvation. Now, I agree there's no human work of salvation, but embracing as a secondary cause salvation, and therefore there's significant human responsibility is not saving oneself. Embracing the work of Christ, the atoning and resurrection work of Christ, applied to a believer, but a believer embracing that is not a work of salvation. That is in agreement with Ephesians 1 and Ephesians 2. But it does allow for significant human responsibility in accepting the gospel or rejecting the gospel. An error on the Armenian side is open theism, in which it overemphasizes the human responsibility and diminishes who God is and what he does in action. At Columbia Bible College, I was taught by some professors that God chooses everyone and some believe and some don't. I think that's wrong. I think whom God chooses will believe and God will persuade them through the Holy Spirit. And God will be the primary cause and human beings will be a secondary cause. So these are two errors. Overall, this is a good pamphlet. Suggest you read it if you get a chance. Thank you.